Michael Verney is with us. Michael, good morning. Owen, how are you? Very well. Uh, the Irish Examiner in front of me this morning leads with a headline saying GEA clubs asked to report training ban breaches. It's a story by Owen Cormican and I'm just going to read out the first two paragraphs here. Uh, GEA clubs do not have to possess evidence of a county team breaching the September 14 training ban to make a complaint to Croke Park. Clubs have been told to bypass their county board and report incidences or suspicions of collective inter-county training directly to Croke Park. So what we are depending on here, Michael, is if there is breaches in the training regime and the September 14th training rule, we expect people within a club, within a county, to actually make a complaint. How likely or unlikely is that in your view? Yeah, it's a difficult one. You're essentially, you're essentially kind of snitching on your own, whatever about, you know, talk uh, maybe within the club or talk around the county about whether a team is uh, training collectively or whatever the, the, the story is to actually to actually make a formal complaint and potentially land some of your own club players and potentially land people that you know in a lot of hot water. Is it likely to happen? Um, I'd say there'd have to be an, a fair degree of unrest for it to happen. I don't see it as as that likely to happen. I think... I think by by making the U-turn, and in fairness to the GA, th there was a total U-turn on their stance. And to be fair to them, it was probably a harder thing to do than th they probably could have just towed the party line that they were towing. Uh, fair play to them for actually rowing back on what they had previously said. But I think most of the unrest that would have been amongst you know club members, club managers, and things like that is probably dissipated a good bit. Well, it should it should have because basically it's it's totally. It's totally banned now for, for counties to be doing anything. So I think that the likelihood of counties doing things, there's, there's, listen, there's probably still going to be some counties doing a few bits and pieces, even though they shouldn't be, with the likelihood of clubs being, you know, as put out as some of them felt they were and club managers, club officials without club players, it's a lot less likely now. So it's, it's probably a lot less likely that they're going to be making a formal complaint, particularly, as I said, if they're going to be landing people that they know, people that they meet regularly. Like imagine a club secretary having to send an email and it's basically going to be the club chairman within the, or the county chairman within that county that's going to be one of the people that's probably going to be reprimanded. I, it's probably very unlikely, I would say. Is this a better situation in your view than the GEA coming out and saying, let the inter-county players train with the inter-county team and let them play matches? With the club team because at least in that scenario there's control and we know exactly what is happening in this situation we don't know what's going on but at least there will be probably more time spent with the club and that's only just a, a guess on my part like which of those two evils would you prefer the, the, the knowing in, in a, a sort of better in, or in a worse situation or the unknowing uh, in, a, in a better situation uh, I, I think to be honest with you like more, uh, county players like we've had full access to our county players uh, in Bor, and I know that all clubs in Offaly have, and many other counties have have as well. But at least it's 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 hard for it to be a level playing field. But at least it seems that most counties and most clubs are now off a level playing field, and that they're going to have access to their players, or they should have more access to it. Like it's now, it was probably frowned upon somewhat for county players to be away from their clubs over the past maybe you know couple of months maybe eight maybe eight to ten weeks but at least now you know they have to be there there's some sort of directive there they are actually officially you know contravening rules they're breaking rules and you know if i was if i was a club manager or if i was a club official and we were after putting all you know years into the development of players who are like our club players who are now playing county at least there's something there for us uh, it's it's not it's it's a tough it would be a tough stance to take to actually go and send an email and basically land people in hot water but at least it's something there for them and I think I think this is a much better situation than what we had before like rumors of things all sorts of rumors um, and most of it a lot of it based on fact of things going on behind closed doors at least there's some sort of a, an avenue for the club to go down if uh, if they feel they've been very hard done by and I think just from even chatting to people there does seem to be Far more of these county players, I, I, I can't say anecdotally that it's 100%, but they are back with their clubs now. And I think there'd be a fair bit of relief for a lot of these county players as well because it's very, very hard to serve two masters. And I know you had Rory Gallagher on, on last week, uh, the Derry manager, former Donegal manager and coach as well. They're, they're, the players were been put in an awful position. Like imagine 
you know, you're being dragged, we'll say, to your to your county train. You you do want to be at you want to be a county train, obviously, if it's if it's called, but you also want to be at your club train. You feel like you're letting lads down and at least like the mental kind of torture that was going on in some uh, county players' heads, at least that should be taken away now and they should be let so uh, focus solely on the club. Uh, listen, it'd be interesting to see what do we hear over the next while. I haven't heard anything in the last since the directive was was put down from Crow Park about about anyone you know breaking the rules. But it'd be interesting to see when you know people start getting itchy feet, particularly in you know August and September, even before September 14. It'd be interesting to see what we hear. But at least there's some sort of an avenue there for clubs that they can go down. Whether they take that hard line to actually go down is another story. Well, what's, what's the difference, Michael, between the current situation we're in and the situation some counties will reach on September 14th, where there will still be county championships to play, but suddenly the inter-county player is allowed to go and train with their county. Is that suddenly OK? Like, is just because the rule is different, is it now not OK for a player to go and train with their inter-county team? Will there be no uproar whatsoever come September 14th when they still have club games to play and the club player will still be going off training with their county because that's what the rule says? Yeah, obviously different structures in different counties. Um, I know some counties will be will be finished a couple of weeks even before yeah. September 14th. But in Other, the case of the counties that are going on beyond September 14th, yeah, uh, so like, should should they be? You mean like, should they be training, or or what was the the yeah, question? Like exactly? what, what, what's the situation going to be like? I mean, like, if you're saying that you've got lads back with your club at the moment from the county team, like, all seems well and good, I'd imagine. I'm sure you'll even give a pass for uh, a phone call or Zoom meetings for that for that county player. Like, what what will the club manager, the club player, say come September 14th if they're here in a county where they still have to play club games beyond that September 14th team? Because in all those counties, that is going to be the business end of the club championship, and all of a sudden, it's legal for that player to go off with their county team. Yeah, and it could. It, it's probably going to be in the situation at that stage where you're really, really in the thick of the club championship as well, and you really need your club players there for what be it a quarter final, semi final, or preparing for a county final. So, yeah, so I suppose it's one of these things in the GA that they're just going to have to kind of cross that bridge when they come to it. But I know that county managers. If September 14th is that date, they're going to have everything gung ho. And more than when we went back training, the first day we could go back training, everything was back for that day. And then we were training two days later, and we were training two days later, and we were playing a game. The minute we could play a game, we were back playing a game. And inter county managers are going to be the same because they're going to have, well, probably four weeks before their first league game, and then maybe six weeks before championship. It's, go it's going to be messy. There's no point in saying any different. But I think. The club, the club players and the club managers will have had a good shot at it, and I think, like even having them train twice with the club, and maybe you know, maybe or maybe even once with the club and twice with the county at that stage, it'll be a lot more. There'll be a lot more leniency from clubs at that stage because they've had them, because they've had them basically for you know the guts of twelve weeks at that stage. It's gonna take. There's gonna be a lot of jiggery pokery as well, and there's probably gonna be a few rows and a few disagreements, but. Yeah. I think the club players will have had a good, and club managers will have had a good shot at that stage. And they're just going to have to communicate. I mean, communication can be uh, a tricky thing within the GA. And well, I think Michael, why couldn't they do that now? Why couldn't they do that before September 14th? Like just playing devil's advocate here, why did there need to be a ban on intercounty training? Like if there's going to need to be communication after September 14th. Why could there not be communication now and put the trust into the county teams to actually? delegate towards the clubs to give players back to the clubs whenever there may be a, a very obvious answer to that question i accept but just being devil's advocate like you look at october the 11th you've got your carlo senior football championship final your mead senior hurling championship final what about the the, the carlo and mead inter-county managers in football and, and hurling respectively like that last month is going to be a nightmare for them trying to take the players back from the club given the uproar that we've seen over the last couple of weeks yeah i suppose that month will be a nightmare but for the club managers if the county had been allowed to run roughshod, which in many instances they had, the, the, there's potential for three months to be an absolute disaster. And for, like I know anecdotally in, in some counties that, uh, you know, predominant football county that had basically had their players four nights a week and they basically weren't, they weren't near their clubs at all. So like that's what would happen if you let if you let it happen for a, a two to three month period and they basically wouldn't be with their clubs. Club championship would essentially be non existent for some for, for those players. They'd be back training with their club, the the training session before championship games and they play the championship game, then they'd gone back to the county and the same thing would happen again. So at least now 
like there there's something in place that the counties can't it, it can't be like that that runaway train where they're just going to be off with their county the whole time they have to be they're supposed to be with their club now that's the that's the only real thing on i think it's 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 shortening the the window for the county to kind of dominate if you know what i mean like they shouldn't be with their counties now they're not supposed to be whereas Loose, loosely, if we'd left it kind of loose, uh, where oh, they're not supposed to be there, but there's no sanctions, counties would just do what they, you know, you know yourself, you do what you get away with, whereas you can't get away with that now, or well, anecdotally, you shouldn't get away with it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if anybody does actually try it and get away with it, and what those sanctions end up being, because if it's if it's a county chairman taking one for the county, where he gets a short suspension, and that county goes on to win all Ireland, like. The night that the cup comes home, that county chairman's going to be shouldered high because <laughs> he took the fall. The county team is training four nights a week. Away you go, uh, glory, glory, whichever county that is. In, in in terms of like, this scenario obviously is in response to a global pandemic, right? And we've we've seen that there is the possibility to enact new laws very quickly and set up new structures very quickly. Is there any sense that long term planning or lessons are being learned here? Because it seems like they kind of blundered into the uh, no sanctions, oh, we will actually have sanctions. And even still, I, I, I think it's it's a really weird scenario to suddenly put everything, and it might be a genius, it might be a stroke of genius to put it back on the individual club members. Imagine being the club secretary who has to hit send on the email, ratting out your own county. Like, just imagine. So I think they've done a brilliant job here where no one's actually more than likely going to do that. And there's plausible deniability from everybody in the hierarchy going, well, we, we gave you the chance. It's up to you guys now to police this. And, and maybe that's what you're supposed to do in a, a democratic organization. I'm getting to my question here. What are we going to learn into the future? How much of this can we transmit and, and do next season and the year after that? Yeah, I think it's kind of difficult because it wasn't their initial stance. So that's they obviously like maybe didn't see it as a problem or didn't see maybe they don't see uh, the the runaway train of of the county game as a problem. Uh, I think people coming out and talking and all the unrest that's around a lot of clubs around the country not having access to you know their best player or their best players and players that they put years uh, they put years of coaching into. There was a lot of unrest all around these different counties. People came out and talked, and it's amazing how quickly things could change when some high-profile names came out and basically said what most clubs were thinking or most people within clubs. But as you say, like the, it, the GA's uh, change of stance was a, re a reaction to that, and they basically put all the responsibility back on the clubs. And as you say, if they don't get any complaints or anything like that, and there's you know there's some unrest, but they don't get complaints. They put all the responsibility on the club. I, I think I think some people probably will. There what probably will be some people that would just won't care about whether they're going to fall out with anyone or anything like that. If they feel that their club has uh, been done an injustice, they will send an email. But uh, it's just interesting to see. Like may, maybe this will be you know one of the first tentative steps towards a split season. Something that you know maybe has been you know talked about in some circles within the GA or within the GA hierarchy, but it's not something that uh, ever realistically looked like looked like happening. Maybe this could be the first tentative step to something like that happening when they realised, okay, we let them, we let the county and club kind of run on together and it just didn't work. It just was not working. Clubs were going mad. People with a uh, county chairman were being put in very, very awkward positions. So maybe it's the first tentative step to something like that happening, but I still, I still think that a uh, split season is probably a good bit away. But it's funny what you said, Jar. It's amazing as well how quickly things can happen when they have to happen, and how rules can go out mm. the window. And it doesn't need to go to special congress, or it doesn't need to go to normal GA congress every year. When they have to, when they're putting an unprecedented scenario, they can change things. Not on a whim, right, like that, but they can change things very quickly. So. Maybe a split season isn't isn't as far away as I think. I still think it's a good bit away. Hopefully, this is the first maybe tentative step to that. Well, can we tease that out? Because it, it, what, what actually, it's funny because I, I fully agree with you. If Michael Dignan hadn't said what he said, I don't think there would have been a change. Maybe somebody else might have come out and, and rallied the troops. But Dignan was so brilliant and so forceful and, and so clear in what he was saying. And nobody could disagree with it. And Colin O'Rourke actually backed it up pretty quickly afterwards as well. But if if people now say this is working, 
this this actually re- really works for clubs, then surely that can be the the momentum behind it too. Like, I don't think it's that ludicrous to think that Dignan could be the, the next president of the GA on the back of what we're seeing at the moment, or or a Dignan candidate, somebody who comes in and says, "This is what's going to happen." The only thing I'm running on, the only thing I care about is splitting the season, and we're going to have a a festival of intercounty in late summer and it's going to be a festival of club early summer or whatever the, whatever the dates are and then everybody gets behind it like what what actually has to happen for the thing that we're looking at now which seems to be working relatively well with a few kinks uh, for that to be the future why would we go back to what we've already had uh, I suppose uh, well, a lot of it is probably some of it is obviously to do with finances and having your marquee games the games that everybody's eyes are on the county game having uh, going on in the height of summer I, there's a dangerous, uh, not dangerous, dangerous is the wrong word, but given the clubs, the, the you know the height of the summer now, and uh, I suppose the best we- the best weather uh, in Ireland, obviously that's changeable, is probably a dangerous thing in a way from the GA because club players are going to absolutely love this. Basically, being the focal point, uh, you know, in July, in late July, August, and uh, probably early September as well. Uh, if club players get used to that, it'll be something they're probably going to find uh, they'll find it hard to relinquish next season or be it the season after or when, whenever that happens. I don't see th- this. This is hopefully, this is hopefully the, the first step towards uh, the bigger picture and things that have been talked about uh, ad nauseum for the last ten years. Club the club game being basically kind of edged out of the GAA and club players not being able to play league games, not being able to play championship games, not being able to train with their club. This is probably. Uh, it's a good it's a good basis for a template going forward. Uh, whether whether it is the actual template going forward will be interesting to see. Maybe the GA will just say, okay, this was an unprecedented season. Um, we're going to kind of go back to far more what the what the norm was. But the norm was the norm was so distorted in terms of you know the club the basis of the GA that was basically been undercut. So hopefully hopefully this is the first tentative steps. I'd be I wouldn't be so sure whether whether that is going to be the first tentative steps or something like that happening, but I, I I'm hopeful. Who will decide that? Because uh, does that power rest with the professional staff in Croke Park, or does that power actually rest with the county board chairman and the president, essentially the the elected part of the organisation? Who will decide that? Well, as you, as you saw, Joe, even with, with Michael Dignan talking and the likes of Colin O'Rourke talking as well. A decision decisions obviously usually will be coming from Crow Park and from the GA. But when you know when people you know raise you know things that are emotional to people and clubs all around the country, things can change quite quickly. So I would have imagined that a lot. Of, basically, I'd say a lot. There'll be an awful lot of feedback coming back to Crow Park, coming back to to John Horn. Um, over how the, how the club championships went, were, were county were county chairman happy with them? Were clubs happy with them? And if you know if the if Crow Park are lobbied by twenty five county chairman or chairpersons and say, listen, we this was this was absolutely brilliant for our county. This was absolutely brilliant for our clubs. Our clubs are back thriving again. This is the way forward. Then Crow Park are put in a position where okay. Um, Two thirds of the county chairman, county chairpersons within a county, they're demanding this. They're after seeing what it's doing for clubs and what it can do for the county teams as well. And then maybe that's something that they're running with, you know. But you have to probably county chairman and chairpersons probably have to lobby Crow Park, let them know maybe how well this went, and see maybe maybe that's that's the sort of way it has to. It can't just be the county chairman or chairpersons, and it can't just be Crow Park. It has to be kind of the two of them kind of coming together. But I'd say if they, if they lobby them and say, like, our county is thriving now. The clubs are thriving. People are so happy. Uh, county players are delighted to be back at their clubs. They're delighted to have this dedicated time with them, not in the, in the muck and, and scrap in winter as well. That's probably, it's probably the two of them coming together for something like that to happen, I would think. Hmm. Listen, Michael, thanks, Billy, for taking the call this morning. Cheers, on. Cheers, Joe.